Welcome back to Movie Time Minutes. Today we've got a special video for you that is ranking all 13 of the DCEU movies. This goes from Man of Steel all the way to The Flash. I am leaving out um, anything that's not theatrical released, so no Zack Snyder's Justice League and no uh, Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition and no Peacemaker. But everything else DCEU we're going to rank here in this, every theatrical released movie. Now I am fully aware most of you are not going to agree with this list or have the exact same uh, top 1 to 13 on these films. That's okay. Let me know in the comments your list. Be happy to discuss it with you. Not all of us have the same taste and that's just fine. And before I jump in, don't forget to like and subscribe. I need your subscription. I need your support. Uh, we want to keep making these videos like this and I can't do it without you. So thank you for subscribing. Let's get this started. Number 13, Birds of Prey and the Fabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Now, I know this movie has its fans. This is the one, I mean, one DCEU film that I walked away just not enjoying when I left the theater. A lot of people have problems with a lot of the DCEU. Me, I actually am a lover of most of it. I just didn't click with, with the Birds of Prey movie. I don't know why that is, what it is about that movie that uh, turned me away from it. But I come out of that theater thinking, this is not what I'm going to rewatch. And I I haven't rewatched it. Uh, maybe I do need to sit down with it one more time. Let me know in the comments if you think I need to give this one another shot. But I didn't enjoy Birds of Prey for whatever reason. Uh, I, I thought Margot Robbie was great in it. I thought Ian McGregor uh, was fun as the villain. I just, I just didn't enjoy the movie. At number 12, Wonder Woman 1984. After the first Wonder Woman and knowing that Patty Jenkins was coming back to direct this one, I was extremely excited for Wonder Woman 84. But this movie is another one that just completely disappointed. Uh, it came out simultaneously streaming on HBO Max as well as in theaters. They even released a little promo of uh, an opening scene from the movie. It got me excited. I was extremely happy to watch this movie. Pedro Pascal as a villain in this. Uh, bringing in Cheetah. Then I watched the movie. It was not great. Not the dumpster fire some make it out to be, but not a great movie. So Wonder Woman 1984 is second to the bottom on my list. Number 11, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This is another movie that the first one uh, really set the, set the bar high for a sequel to come. And this one was a little more recently. And DC had already kind of established itself as being a little bit mid lately and honestly I just feel like this movie didn't have the same magic that the first movie had I know it has its fans I'm not saying this movie was a dumpster fire but it wasn't great that's just my opinion I didn't think the humor worked near as well I didn't like the family near as much this time around um, honestly I thought the child actors were better than the adult actors so for those reasons Shazam Fury of the Gods is at number 11 at number 10, David Ayer's Suicide Squad. This is the first Suicide Squad movie we got. And Will Smith, Margot Robbie, we got Jared, Letters, Jared Leto's Joker in this. Uh, I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. This is the first movie on this list that I'm going to say is actually a positive for me. I enjoyed this, and it got a lot of hate as well, and I understand every single issue that people have with this movie. However, I thought the fun factor outweighed the negatives of it, and it came out as a good movie experience for me. But even with that experience, uh, <laughs> the movie still had its flaws, and for that reason, this is number 10. At number 9, another one of the more recent DCEU movies, Black Adam. I absolutely love The Rock. I love Dwayne Johnson. Uh, the Justice Society in this movie was really good. Honestly, it was the saving grace for me of this movie. Uh, Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate, uh, Aldous Hodge as Hawkman. The, the whole Justice Society aspect of this movie was incredible. What didn't work for me was some of the decisions they made with the storytelling and even the little boy that was in this movie. It, maybe it was just the writing. I just didn't enjoy his character. Overall, like Suicide Squad, this is another fun movie. Uh, had some great jokes in it, some great action. Uh, special effects were pretty good. Overall, I enjoyed it, but I've got it pretty far down the list here. At number eight, and this may surprise you that it's even this high, but I have Justice League. This is the theatrical version of Justice League, the one that Joss Whedon took over and directed and uh, finished. And this movie probably is as high up as it is because of what it is. The feeling that I got, and that's what these movies are. They're experiential events. And me going to the theater to watch this 
on an IMAX screen for the first time, sitting down, looking up and thinking, okay, this is what I've been waiting my entire childhood for. I, I'm a huge DC fan, huge Justice League fan, and to see them all come together on screen like this, it was a magical moment for me. Honestly, I walked out of the theater thinking this was like the greatest movie ever, and then I rewatched it and I realized, okay, well, maybe it's not that great. But overall, I still had a great experience with it, and because of that, I do have the Justice League movie as number eight. Speaking of movies that I thought a lot higher of when I first walked out of the theater than, than later rewatches of it, number seven, the Flash. Uh, this one just recently come out. It's the newest movie on this list. And I really enjoyed the Flash movie. I laughed a lot of the way through it. There were some jokes that didn't work for me as well as others. But overall, I enjoyed this Flash movie. I thought Michael Keaton was incredible uh, coming back as Batman. Uh, I thought uh, Sasha, Sasha Kalye, is that Kalye? I, I can't pronounce her name. Uh, but I thought she was great as Supergirl. Ezra Miller, we won't get into the other Ezra Miller stuff right now, but... Uh, did a good job with this part. This movie was a fun movie, a, I believe, an enjoyable, good movie, and I, I think we're in the group of good movies now. Uh, it's just not as high up as some of these others for me, just because of a few of the issues that if you watch my review, you'll see that I had with the movie. So, The Flash, number seven. At number six is the first Shazam movie. This one didn't do as well as the box office as I feel like it probably should have, my wife absolutely loves this movie. Uh, one of my best friends really enjoys this movie. So I've got people all around me that uh, consider this one of the top DC films. It didn't quite make it into my top five uh, DCEU, but it is at number six, and for good reason. This is a great movie. It is a fun movie. It is a movie about family. It's a movie about uh, heart. Um, just everything you want from a superhero tale, this is it. If if you're a kid who's been bullied, if you're a kid who uh, is just looking to stand out, this is the movie for you. This is uh, overall one of the first DCU movies I will probably show to my son when he gets old enough to watch some of these. So Shazam, number six. At number five, this is one that surprised me because at the time it was coming out, I didn't think that the actress playing Wonder Woman was really that strong of an actress. Uh, she was fine in Batman v Superman. I had seen her in the Fast and Furious franchise. But Gal Gadot, to me, was just not somebody that I thought could hold her own as a uh, mainstream DC character. And I'm proud that she pulled through and that her and Patty Jenkins directing this made a fantastic Wonder Woman movie. All five of these top five are movies that I highly recommend for anybody to watch. Uh, even though some of them are a little more controversial than others. Uh, but Wonder Woman is one of my favorite DC movies. I've rewatched this several times. Absolutely love it. Uh, I love the portrayal of the character. Um, the only issue I have with this movie, and the reason it stays down, is because of that final CG fight with Ares. Didn't quite hit for me. But with that being said, everything else in this movie worked tremendously well. And... I absolutely loved it. So Wonder Woman is my number five. At number four, and probably the one that will surprise the most of you, uh, that it's this high up the list of any other movies that I've got on this list up toward the top, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Something about this movie, uh, I went into it knowing some of the reviews. I was a couple days after the initial release of this. I had seen some of the reviews for this. I knew it wasn't getting the highest praise. But it, it, it was fun for me. I, I love this movie. I came out of this movie having a great time. Went back and saw it again. Uh, I love the fight with Batman v Superman. But honestly, the start of this movie, seeing Bruce Wayne drive through the streets, get out, run through the smoke, look up after saving the kid and, and seeing uh, Superman and Zod fight up in the sky, just seeing the... Honestly, Ben Affleck should have gotten a, a dang Oscar for this. It was It was incredible. Uh, just that scene alone would put this movie toward the top for me because I I, I had so much feels um, just during that one scene of this movie. But overall, the whole movie, I'll even defend the Martha scene a little bit if I have to because uh, while it was corny, I understood it. And I thought for the moment what they were going for, it kind of worked um, in, in that aspect. Uh, you know, it's not a great scene, but... 
it, it's okay. I, I feel like the rest of the movie kind of makes up for that. Again, this one ended with a pretty bad CGI fight. Um, didn't quite live up to the expectation it should have with the buildup this movie had for this. The better fight was the Batman vs. Superman fight in this movie instead of the Doomsday fight. But that's okay. This got us our first look at Wonder Woman. Got us our uh, first look at this version of Batman, which I thought Ben Affleck killed it as Batman in, in this particular movie. Um, so there's that. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, my number four. At number three, the first and only billion dollar movie in this franchise, Aquaman. Uh, we knew when we saw Justice League that Jason Momoa had created a new version of this character that honestly had been a punching bag and a joke in DC Comics for a while to the mainstream audience. And he took this character and made Aquaman rise. Uh, Arthur Curry in this is an incredible character. A lot of fun to be around. Um, the villains were good in this movie. Patrick Wilson as Ocean Master, phenomenal. Overall, one of the best DC has come up with. James Wan uh, proves that he is a tremendous director. We'll see how the second Aquaman movie does when it comes out. But uh, as of right now, I've got Aquaman at number three. Number two, and the reason I'm excited for the DCU, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Now, whether you like this movie or not, I think this is one of the best that DC has ever had in any medium, whether it be animated DC, whether it be the overall DC movies, even going back to the Nolan trilogy, whether it's this DCEU or going forward. I think The Suicide Squad is a tremendous movie with so much heart, so much passion that you can just tell James Gunn really worked to put into this. The character development in, in such a short time frame to be able to do what they did with this, great. Um, I never thought I'd be able to say that Polka Dot Man was one of my favorite characters in a DC movie, and yet here we are. Polka Dot Man was fantastic. So, uh, Suicide Squad, to me, very deservingly gets that number two spot. I mean, and it led to, honestly, my favorite thing in the DCEU, which is Peacemaker, coming after this. It's just not included on the list because it's not a theatrical film. Uh, it led to that. And for all of those reasons and more, I mean, to me, James Gunn is just a genius with writing this stuff. Uh... Suicide Squad is my number two favorite DCEU movie. You all know what that means. Number one, to me, is the one that started it all, Man of Steel. Man of Steel has its haters. Maybe that's deservingly so. But to me, this is one of the greatest comic book achievements in history. I love Henry Cavill as Superman. This is not your normal Boy Scout Superman, so I understand that side of the argument for this. Um... Uh, but the movie itself gave us a Superman in a modern age and what things would be like now if he were to come to Earth in this time. And I think they nailed it. Uh, the acting choice for this, the storytelling, having Zod come, come down and seeing how the world would react and all of that stuff made for a super compelling Superman movie to me. I think it's highly underrated. I don't think enough people appreciate what this movie is, does, I think most of those people need to go back and rewatch this movie again now and just see exactly how relevant this movie still is so many years later, 10 years later. It's not just my favorite of the DCEU movies. It's one of my favorite comic book movies ever made. But you don't have to agree. I'm going to leave this open to you now in the comments. Let me know what you think of my list, my 1 to 13. Does yours uh, mix up quite a bit of these? Are you completely opposite of me on this list? Let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. This has been a joy to make. I love making these videos. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, we're trying to grow here, and I can't do it without you, like I said. So, uh, appreciate you being here. This has been Movie Time Minute. My name is DJ, and we'll catch you next time.